to another PC Perini tutorial. Um, today, the tutorial is actually going to be on, uh, well, the second tutorial of the day, actually. I just finished one on the iPod Touch. Um, it's going to be on private instant messaging and how you, as a Mac user, can set up your own server. Now, if you don't know what that means, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and explain it really quickly. Um, how instant messaging works is you type in your message for example let's say your message is uh, finder now ignoring everything that shows up here you hit enter that message finder goes to wherever the instant messaging server is for us right here that's this program right here um, and then that server tells it where to go from there that server also controls who can use your programs and uh, things of that nature. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about how to set up your own XMPP, which I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's um, it's a generic instant messaging protocol. Uh, I believe AOL uses Oscar. Um, I know that Google Talk uses XMPP, and Facebook will soon use XMPP. So it's uh, it's pretty popular. Um, here, oops, sorry, you see OpenFire. OpenFire is probably the simplest program I've ever used to do a complex thing. Uh, simply installing what's called MySQL. Uh, I'm not sure if you pronounce it MySQL, doesn't matter. Um, simply by doing that and installing it, it's a, it's a simple install just like any other program that's a that's a database program it's not important um, you need to have it but it's not important to know what it is um, I ran OpenFire and it set up my instant messaging server now you can it's it's that simple I mean you see you say well you're leaving something out what's going on you're, you're jipping us off here you're you know you're not telling us how it works well, I am. That's all there is to it. It was a simple install, and it took me straight to the administration console, which makes things a little more complicated. But, um, simple enough. It tells you uh, where the host name is, so when you're setting up on an XMPP client, such as Adium, Adium, however you pronounce it, or uh, I believe Jabberfox is uh, another one. XMPP, another name for it is Jabber, just so you know. Uh, but that's not the point. Um, it's really easy. You just go in here. Uh, you can add plugins like Message of the Day. Uh, you can change the name, the domain name. different server settings you can set up and everything is set up to work by default you can even set up a SIP server and I would like to know very much how to do that because I think that would be very interesting you could even run it off of a, an iPod touch or iPhone but this is some more in the future here you can edit the uh, whoops let me get it off of that here you can edit the uh, groups or not the groups the uh, the users here um, oh well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just trying to be paranoid. Uh, regardless, you can actually add and subtract your own users to uh, define uh, what who can connect to your server. Now, when you set it up, you're gonna use it uh, when when you first start. And you run OpenFire and you set up your XMPP account, you plug in your host name of your computer and you figure, well, it works. But then if someone tries to access it from outside your local network, it's not going to work anymore. So what you have to do is you have to go into router edit. Usually it's 192.168.1.1 in any uh, internet browser. Log in using your username and password. The, the default depends on the router go to port forwarding and triggering or something along those lines go to add custom service 
call it whatever you want. I call it XMPP, but you could call it Open Fire Port or I am server, but I'm going to call it Jabber for this run. Type in the number 5222 two, two, and then again 5222. Two, two. And what this is going to do is this is going to forward the port 5222, two, two, which is the default Jabber port, to whatever your computer's IP address is. Now you're going to have to make your address static. If you don't know what that is, I might do an IP addressing video later, uh, but static IP addressing is extremely important for this. Mine is 108. Click Apply. And that's how you forward your port. Um, so now, people outside of your network can use it simply by going to what is my IP.com? Now I'm gonna shrink this window down so you can't see my IP address. But um, it brings up a simple interface. It says your IP address is, and then gives you exactly what your IP address is. And there you go. And instead of using this as your host name, use your IP address as your host name, and everyone can access it from wherever they are. Now, I went a step further and actually went to GoDaddy and got a very cheap domain. Uh, it's actually perininet.info. It was only about a dollar, and that was for a year long domain. So, you can actually um, sign up or you can actually log in using perininet.info should you want to uh, sign up for Perini IM which is my uh, IM service I suppose um, and uh, I actually went the extra mile and made up a simple free website some cool graphics that I threw together with some basic sign up stuff you send that off and then it gives you a basis on how to install gives you all your connection info perininet.info port 5222 and you can connect and talk to anyone else on your network and anyone running a Mac can do this themselves it's very easy not very processor intensive. Um, I constantly run open fire. It almost never goes down, and I've managed to run Fireworks, GarageBand, Firefox, and System Preferences all at once with it running in the background. I'm constantly running World of Warcraft and and Warcraft Three: The Throws and Th Frozen Throne. Uh, with it too so it's it works and uh, I really do believe that that's all the time I have I've probably actually gone over my time but uh, that's alright I'll crop it up thanks for watching um, woot.